If you're working in IT right now and you're somewhere early in your career or you're trying to get into IT, I want to speak to you for a couple minutes. Maybe you're help desk, maybe you're a junior sysadmin, or maybe you're in a position where you're competent but you're really unsure about where it's all heading. You see people online talking about six figures, cloud this, security that, but it can all feel vague and a little bit unrealistic. Like there's some secret that you missed. What I want to do in this video is lay out a very realistic career path to get to $100,000 a year in IT. It's not flash. It doesn't require any hype and it doesn't require you to reinvent who you are. This is a three to four year path that builds skills that compound naturally if you do it the right way. Now I'm going to name the path why it works, and then walk through it step by step. So the path is infrastructure generalist to systems owner. That's the entire thing. This is the path of someone who understands how systems connect how failures propagate, and how to take responsibility for environments that actually matter to a business. This path is quiet, it's practical, and it pays very well. So the first stage of this path is where many people probably already are, help desk or junior IT. At this stage, your job is not to be exceptional, it is to build context. You're getting exposed to real environments for the first time. You might be used to lab environments or exam questions, but now you're getting into the nitty gritty of real messy environments that are based off of history and there are a lot of unknowns. A lot of imperfect decisions have been made that led to this environment. And this is where you start learning how organizations actually use technology. You're seeing how users authenticate, how access is granted and removed, how devices are managed, how cloud services connect back to identity, and you're seeing how all these random network issues show up as random user issues. Even if your day-to-day -day feels super repetitive in this stage, what's important is that you pay attention to the underlying systems underneath the hood. You're starting to realize that oftentimes a single issue touches multiple systems at once. A login issue might involve identity, networking, device policy, and security controls all together. And that realization is important. Now, the people who grow the fastest in this stage are not necessarily the smartest. They're the ones who stay curious and grind. They take notes. They follow issues a little bit deeper than required. They ask how something is supposed to work as opposed to just trying to fix it temporarily. These people are slowly building a mental map of the environment. And by the end of the year, the goal is not mastery, it's familiarity. You want to understand what exists and why it exists and how it fits together. Now, step two of this path is moving into sysadmin level responsibility. Sometimes that comes with the title change, sometimes it doesn't. The most important part is the work that you're doing. At this point, you're no longer just responding to incidents, you are maintaining and changing systems. You're touching Active Directory or Entra ID heavily, group policy and device management, DNS and DHCP, servers or cloud services, and then permissions or access control extensively. You're trusted with changes that now affect multiple users, maybe hundreds of users or multiple branches, and you start to feel the weight of those decisions. You learn that even small changes can ripple outwards, and you start to just pause a little bit before you click apply. You also learn to think who might be affected, and this is where troubleshooting gets a lot more intentional. You're no longer guessing, rather you are forming hypotheses and then narrowing scope. So somewhere in this year or two, your thinking starts to change. You stop seeing problems as isolated events and you start seeing them as symptoms of underlying system behavior. You start to understand why certain misconfigurations keep resurfacing. You might understand why identity issues often show up as application problems, why networking problems cause strange and inconsistent failures, and very importantly, why policy changes need testing and rollback plans. People around you are gonna to start to notice that if you work on an issue, they can trust you that the issue is going to be permanently fixed you start to build trust. Now year two to three is the least talked about step, but the most important one, and that is an infrastructure generalist step. An infrastructure generalist or a domain generalist is someone who works across multiple domains, multiple different parts of technology, and doesn't silo themselves into one area. You don't need to be the deepest expert in any single area. What's important is that you can reason across boundaries and think at a systems level. At this point, you're comfortable moving along identity and access networking, servers and cloud platforms, security controls, and then monitoring and recovery as well. You're often the person who connects other teams together. Now in this phase, when something breaks, you can trace that failure from end to end, whether it's user, device, network, identity, service. This is where your value accelerates. Now generalists become really valuable because most modern environments are very complex. Like Things don't just fail in one place often. Companies struggle when things break across boundaries because everyone who's silo siloed into their own area only sees their one domain and they don't see the big picture. Again, an infrastructure generalist is gonna see that whole picture. You understand how cloud and on-prem systems interact, how identity ties anything and everything together, how security decisions are going to affect usability, and then how networking underpins reliability. You're able to diagnose problems faster because you understand where risk actually lies and that skill 
skill is rare. Now step four, you become a system owner or a senior system engineer of types. At this stage, it is unmistakable. You are not defined by a tool set. You are defined by responsibility. Now you're accountable for systems that matter. You might be in charge of identity infrastructure, core cloud platforms, endpoint management, backups and disaster recovery, monitoring and alerting, all of these business critical services. Now people come to you before making changes. They trust in your judgment. They ask you for your opinion on things. You're really thinking about reliability, uptime, risk, change management, and then long-term maintainability. Now at this point, you're not just fixing problems, you're also preventing future problems. So understand the $100,000 doesn't come when you learn one more tool. $100,000 comes when you bring so much to value to a company because you're reducing uncertainty. You're trusted to make decisions calmly. You can explain trade-offs clearly. You own the outcomes of your decisions. And of course, you protect critical systems. That level of trust is expensive, but it's worth it. And again, this is where the compensation usually crosses into six figures, whether that's senior systems engineer, platform engineer, site reliability engineer, infrastructure engineer, or something similar. Now, one of the things that I like the most about this path is that it does not rely on trends. Tools are going to change. Platforms evolve and job titles shift. But system thinking lasts. And once you understand how networking, compute, identity, and all of these things we've discussed fit together, you can adapt almost anywhere. And that is career resilience. If you're early in your career and this feels far away, that is okay. Don't feel the need to rush it. You don't need to compare timelines and you do not need to know everything now. You just focus on the controllables, the things that you can control in the moment. Understanding systems, asking thoughtful questions, taking responsibility seriously, being independent and becoming dependable. Those qualities compound quietly and then over a span of years, you become unrecognizable. Now this $100,000 IT path is not hidden because it's a secret. It's hidden because it's boring. It rewards people who take system work seriously and take ownership over their decisions. It's a gradual process for people who are willing to grow steadily over time. Now, if you commit to becoming an infrastructure generalist and a systems owner, you have doors open for yourself. It's a strong, clear, and stable path in IT. And understand, once you get to that point after four to five years, it's very easy to niche out somewhere else. Let's say you love cybersecurity. You can easily niche at that point and make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Let's say you decide, I love networking. You can niche out in that direction and, and decide to make hundreds of thousands of dollars there. So it's a very freeing path as well. I think this is the optimal path to go in IT. I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you so much for all the support lately. Be safe, be smart make some good decisions, and good luck earning your infrastructure journalist stripes. Bye.